Well, blessed Friday to you as we come with your daily encouragement. And we're going to go into the bottom of page 110 through 111. And just alert, we're going to have an interruption for Holy Week. We like to go on some devotions for that. And I was hoping to do all this before, but we'll, we'll do it when we can here. So we're talking about that we are confessed as sinners, but we are also confessed as people of grace. And that grace does not come by ourselves, it comes outside of ourselves. But it is the grace of the good news, the gospel, which is so hard for the pious to understand. Now, I'm going to say that he's using the word pious almost as the word of hypocrite, someone who's pretending to be righteous. That it conforms us with the truth is what we're seeking. And so the truth says, you are a sinner, a great and desperate sinner. Now come as a sinner that you are to God who loves you. He wants you as you are. And he does not want anything from you, a sacrifice, a work. He wants you alone. And according to Proverbs twenty three twenty six, My son, give me thine heart. God has come to you to save the sinner. Be glad. The message of liberation through truth. You can hide nothing from God. The mask that you wear before men will do you no good before him. He wants to see you as you are. He wants to be gracious to you. You do not have to go on lying to yourself and to your other siblings as if you were without sin. You could dare not be a sinner. Thank God for that. He loves the sinner, but he hates the sin. Now, I know that last phrase has been maybe overused in some context. In fact, what we maybe find is some people who will say that to you that really don't just hate the sin, but do in fact cross the line and hate us in, in while they say that, hate the sin, love the sinner. Because for many of us, we have had love used in an inappropriate way. We have had the hate of our life used in an inappropriate way. The truly the one who will not use it in an inappropriate way is God himself. For God is holy, and God does love us in spite of our sin, and loves us even in our sin. Now that may sound radical, and for some, even preachers would think that that's too radical to say. Am I making an excuse for sin by saying that? By no means. I am saying that God loves you as you are. And as that quote from Proverbs was so important, it said, My son, give me thine heart. Proverbs 23, 26. He wants the heart as it is. He wants your whole being as is. Not to remain the same, but to grow like everyone else in Christ. Grow in our differences, grow in our uniqueness, grow is the people of God. And here's the interesting thing about it as we remember it's Friday. A week from now we'll be reflecting on Good Friday. Jesus died for, and it's taught, all the sins of the world, past, present, and future. He died for them all. Ones that will be repenting and those who will not be repenting. The sad truth of the scripture teaches is that some will succumb to being completely in sin and will not believe the good news. Their hearts will be hardened. I don't want to focus on that, not because I'm trying to be wishy-washy, simply because it is acknowledged in scripture does not mean it has to be. If you're in the sound of my voice, you can receive grace, you can receive forgiveness, but it is acknowledged that all the sins that Christ died for, not all of them have been confessed, not all of them are being forgiven, and it's simply because God is not ra is being wrathful. No, it's because we are not trusting that God has forgiven them. That God truly loves us. That God has truly forgiven us. And we need to acknowledge that. 
So if you think that you are not worthy of God's grace or God's love, that you had to repent some more before you turn to God, think again. God is here to give you his life as you are, as we are. And that is the greatest news that any of us can ever tell us. Now, oh, let's talk about other believers. Sometimes you have to repent a certain amount of time before they will receive you. Different churches will have different standards. So, I mean, the body of Christ does not always reflect that love. And it is a scandal, but it is a reality. There might be some hoops that you have to jump. And I will say that even as a pastor, sometimes my immediate announcement of forgiveness, I know is not always received by those who are out there. Because they're saying in their heart of hearts, they may not want to admit it to me, even to their pastor, that they don't believe it or they have trouble believing it. One of Jesus' miracles, the man said, I believe, Lord, help my unbelief, and how easy it is to live in that unbelief. But the good news is that the gospel still goes out. The good news is that the gospel still changes lives. The good news is that we, too, can live a new life if we dwell and I'll use that term again, alien righteousness, that righteousness outside of ourselves. That righteousness that comes in with and under the bread and wine. That righteousness that comes from the external baptism that we have been baptized. Not just born again, as it says in John 3, born from above is its real meaning. We need that. And the good news is that it transcended all the muck and mire hypocrisy, and everything else of this world and has come down to you and to me. Imperfect as we are in preaching, imperfect as we are in living it, imperfect as we are to have it as number one in our life, even as we claim Jesus as Lord of our churches. So my call to you is come as you are. Yes, repent, but first come as you are. And acknowledge that you are a sinner just like the others who are pretending to be pious. They also are sinners. Some know it and some maybe have forgotten about that. But we have to acknowledge where we are coming from and to whom we place all of our burdens. It is upon Jesus and Jesus alone. Take care. God bless. We'll see you on um, on Monday. Just a reminder, as we enter into Holy Week, we will be focusing on that, the greatest week of the year, as we focus on not only Jesus' death, but Jesus' resurrection, not only on Jesus' divinity, but also his humanity. And so let us hold those things in tension and come back and finish our life together. Take care. God bless. We'll see you next time.